the Model 1863 Springfield rifled musket really has its beginnings in the Crimean War of the mid-1850s. When Great Britain joined with France and Turkey against Russia, they realized they simply didn't have enough manufacturers in all of Britain to make the pattern 1853 Enfield rifle musket. At that time, that Enfield rifle musket was the premier infantry weapon really in the world. So the British government turned to Robbins and Lawrence Company in Vermont and asked them to manufacture some of these weapons. Robbins and Lawrence turned to, got the patterns, the gauges, and started producing them, and then the war ended. And at this point, Robbins and Lawrence had no more contracts. Concurrently, at the same time, the U.S. government was developing its rifled musket, the Model 1855, both at Springfield and Harpers Ferry. When the American Civil War broke out in 1861, those planners in the U.S. Army Ordnance Department knew they were going to need a lot of rifle muskets. And basically, a rifle musket was designed to take a conical mini ball. It was a percussion, muzzle-loading rifle, uh, a three-band rifle, uh, a, a long rifle. And so they set out to make as many as they possibly could, and they involved all kinds of industrial concerns in the North. And the 61 Springfield uh, was really the archetype. It, it, was, it had the lines of the 1855 uh, rifle musket, uh, including a high humped hammer. And the reason that was there was because of the Maynard tape priming system that was used on the 1855 rifle, rifle musket, carbine, and all the variants. But by 1861, they knew that they didn't really need the Maynard tape priming system. The 1863 Springfield Rifle, I wouldn't actually say it was an improvement over the 1861, uh, because I don't think it was. I think it was just a, a war expedient version of the 1861 Springfield uh, that was being made uh, during the American Civil War uh, between 1861 and 1865. There are two variations of that rifle. Some collectors call the second variation the 1864. But there were very slight differences. In the 1863, they had uh, uh, pinched barrel bands. They eliminated the spring that held the solid barrel bands on the 1861. They changed the ramrod. The 1861 had a bulge that held it into the stock. Uh, this was simply a, a, a tulip, and you could screw the ramrod into the, into the stock. Um, the second variation of it, they went back to solid barrel bands with a spring in the stock that locked the band in place. And that was essentially the difference. Uh, there was also a difference in the, in the sight. Uh, some parts on the Type 1 were blued, and they were left in the white. Um, anyway, it was a marvelous rifle. The Model 1863 was the last uh, percussion muzzle-loading firearm made by the Springfield Armory. By the time the war had ended, it was obvious that breech loaders taking metallic cartridges uh, were the future of firearms. Now, uh, the, the Model 1861, Model 1863, uh, continued in service simply by the fact that they could be converted to metallic cartridge by installing a trapdoor type of conversion. Now the real advantage of this is that you could convert four of these muzzle-loading uh, rifle muskets into breech loaders, trapdoor breech loaders, for the cost of one uh, breech loader made from scratch. So of course what the Army did is they made a number of conversions and then they went to making trapdoors from scratch. The Model 1863 even though production ended in 1865, is still made today in the form of Italian replicas. That's all the time that we have for this week. If you like this show and you're not an NRA member, you need to join right now. For more information or to sign up, go to AmericanRifeman.org. I'm Mark Keefe, and I'll see you next week right here on American Rifleman Television.